Hello, everybody. I thought this cute little picture of us here, uh, yes, would be a wonderful backdrop to talk about the horrific works of Thomas Ligotti. Yeah. Oh, I'm boring you, huh, pup? Yes. Um, I read two of Mr. Ligotti's books um, at the same time, which I think was really beneficial. <clears throat> so I read um, a collection of his short stories called um, Teatro Grotesco. Um, and it's weird that I never got into him because, um, he seems very much of my jib. I don't know that I said that saying correctly. Um, but in reading that, I was also reading, um... The Conspiracy Against the Human Race, which is like his, uh, I mean, I want to call it an essay, but it's more like an encyclopedia. It's kind of like if you were kind of blown away by Lovecraft's um, supernatural horror and literature, um, this would destroy your brain into a million little tiny pieces. Um, it does talk about literature in it and um, just being an artist, but it is much larger than that. It is very much a piece of um, philosophy and... Uh, I don't want to say cynicism because I feel like that would be the, um, not weak way of looking at it, but like if someone were to just glance through it, I feel like that would be the thought they came away with, but it is definitely a lot deeper than that. And the reason why it was cool to read these together, because I would read a few chapters of one, and then I would read um, a few short stories, and then read um, a couple more chapters, um, and vice versa. Well, not vice versa, but you understand what I'm saying. And then it would be like in the story I was reading, they would be talking about like the themes of the story would be what I just had read in um, Conspiracy Against the Human Race and it like it was just like that bit was really cool like I almost want to like go over each of these stories individually in separate videos because they are really good like even um some of the ones that i didn't think were like really good were still good like um now i just sound like blurbs on a push button device but like purity was the first story of his I stumbled on. And I'm not stumbled on, but stumbled upon. And this story is so bat crap crazy. Like, I really... I, I, I don't know where to go with it, but basically, like... This part that, and after I read it, I told Zoe about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, Zoe, check this out. And um, I don't know if she was humoring me or what, but 
she seemed interested. But basically, um, this kid, I'm not going to go into the whole thing. I'm just going to give you this little snapshot. This kid thinks that the attic of the place the family's staying in is haunted. And he goes to the dad and he's like, you know, dad, it's haunted up there. I don't want to go up there, you know, whatever. And the dad's like, no, no, no. Like this, this has to stop. I will not have you be doing this. It is not the attic that is haunted um, with ghosts. It is your mind haunting the attic. And um, if you just let me like drain some fluid out of your brain, I can get rid of this fear you have of the haunted attic. And um, then it won't be an issue anymore. And the kid's like, okay. And so the dad does this thing and pulls this fluid from the kid's brain and puts it in a little jar for him. And when the thing's over, the kid is not afraid of the attic anymore. But when he holds that jar, like the fear and um, the anxiety about the attic comes back. So as long as he's not holding on to it, it doesn't bother him. Um, and that just like, I was like, Oh my gosh, I have to read more of this. And, um, that story was great. Um, the clown puppet was great. And, um, It's just so funny because it's so relatable, but I don't know if it's supposed to be relatable. Um, Because obviously not all the stuff was relatable, but um, like for instance, the clown puppet. It's about this dude working in this pharmacy, like a not a back alley pharmacy, but it's on an off street. Um, and the owner likes to keep it open late at night, but has been really cool with the guy. And so whenever you want to close, go ahead and close, but, um, just, you know, keep it open as long as you can or whatever. And, um, the narrator's like, so there I was at my nonsense job doing my nonsense stuff, waiting for nonsense customers and like all of that. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, preach it, brother. You know, like, yes, like I'm on board. And then he's like going, but then I wait for, um, the, he didn't call it an incident. What did he call it? I don't know, like the event or something. Um, we'll call it an incident. That sounds better, actually. Um, as I'm rewriting something. Um, he's like, the incident happened before when I worked at that cemetery. It happened when I was a night watchman. It happened, um, he was just, like, talking about all these events. He's like, and when it happens, it's like the lights kind of turn kind of gold, and I if I turn and look to the left, um, he'll walk in from the right. If I turn and look at the right, he'll look in from the left. And I'm sitting here thinking he's just talking about some dumbass customer coming in, asking dumbass shit, wanting dumbass things. Right. And no, it's an actual marionette that uh, walks in that's on strings and the strings go up into just like this kind of blurry thing above them. And the marionette will, and it's like a clown with a very placid clown face that drives him crazy. And he knows that he has to do all the things that the stupid clown is going to ask him to do in order for the event to end. Cause the times he's tried to like fuck with it, it was always like a step ahead of him. 
So it comes in with this like um, trashed um, prescription. And he's like, he looks down at it and it just has like scribbles on it without any like actual prescriptions on it. And he's like, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with this. But if I do the wrong thing, it's going to make him mad and he won't leave. Um, so it's just like this like total bizarre um, yet amazing thing and these stories are just so good there's another story about this guy who goes into this um, art gallery and listens to tapes of someone recounting their dreams and he becomes completely obsessed with it um, it's just like the stories are so good, and um, a lot of them thread together, um, whether it be a town or a corporation or something. It's just like, I don't know how I never ran across this guy. But the conspiracy against the human race is like his... Um, I don't want to say a doctrine, but it's just like, it's probably like the epitome of his writing and his personal philosophy. And, um, it is shockingly accurate about a lot of stuff. And, um... Like, if you aren't familiar with him, like, in The Conspiracy Against the Human Race, he quotes um, Zappa's uh, Last Messiah a lot, and um, Schopenhauer, and um, who else does he really nail a bunch of stuff to? So if you like that stuff, you probably would really like this. Um, it's just amazing. So, um, and then the coolest thing about the short stories was um, one of the short stories in it had a guy who was writing um, a book called The Investigation into the Conspiracy Against the Human Race. So... And he wasn't the main character of the story. He was like a side character of it. And um, it was just it was just clever. It was cool. The stories are like a cross between like um, Twilight Zone and really bad mental hospital stays, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I don't know another way of talking about it other than that, but um, I'm definitely going to read his earlier stuff because I think both of these things that I'm talking about came out um, in between like uh, 2003 and 2010. That's like seven years. We'll say that. Somewhere in that window, we'll pretend that this stuff came out then. Um, but man, if you want to just talk weird fiction, like, this is almost as, as weird as it gets, but it's full of social commentary. It's not just weird for weird's sake. And I think that's why it was, like, kind of so important to me reading it because it is completely entertaining and completely weird, but he's trying to say something with each story. And I mean, especially with the conspiracy against the human race, he's straight up telling you stuff and, um, telling you 
what his thoughts and views are and stuff like that. So it was really good. I highly recommend both books. And on Goodreads, and this is another thing. I, I talked about this before, and I this is like almost like a dead horse that I've beaten into the ground so many times. Like, we need to have a serious talk about star ratings on books. Um, because I gave... Um, conspiracy against the human race three stars not because I didn't think it was good but because it's so heavy that this is a book I think you have to go back to and read over again and then wait a little bit of time let it sit go back and read it again and I feel like each time I read it I will be able to appreciate it more um, because it is just it's so heavy um, but it's like, I have no doubt that I won't end up giving it five stars, but just on my initial read, like, I felt like there was so much meat on that bone that, um, it's something you have to come back to. It's not, it's not a book to just sit and read. Like, it's like you take... A little bit and think about it take a little bit and you think about it um, and I'm sure this seems like something that they would teach in university level like when I was taking philosophy classes um, this seems very much like um, the stuff I was being taught um, but it was written better like, um, it wasn't as dry as, um, the stuff I was taking in, like, ethics and logic and stuff like that. Like, um, it, it's just good. So anyway, if you've read these, let me know down below what you think. If you, um are a fan of Ligotti and you're like, oh, you have to read this. Drop it down there. Come on, people. You know the rules of this game. Um, I read a little bit of something. You guys know more than I do. I beg for help, and then you guys point me into the right direction. So this is a very symbiotic relationship we have here. So make, make with it. And um, if you guys want to have me do, like short story reviews like that um i would freaking love that so um but again that would be that would take up a lot of my book tubing time so um i would have to really be all in and um i would really want um you guys to be all in on that too so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in so um I think I'm finally done recording videos today, so I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.